hi and welcome to STEM and stuff in this video I'm just going to show how I made these little books um, they are all made from scratch so you don't need really need anything too special um, I'll show you the little one um, inside it has a couple of album posts which are these things here you can pick them up for a couple of do uh, dollars um, and that um, just holds these pages in here and the pages are just regular printer paper with um, that I've tea dyed and there is another video that I've done um, so have a look at my YouTube channel or my blog and you'll be able to find how to to easily dye your papers so that it gives this aged look so on the outside um, the spine is just made from a piece of paper towel roll so that's pretty simple I've just cut the roll in half and half of that forms the spine and then I just have a little bit of um, fabric over the top and this isn't anything special it's just one of those little quilting flats that you can get from um, the craft store um, or like somewhere like Spotlight where they sell fabric and it was just a couple of dollars for, for quite a big square. The first thing to do is just cut a front cover and a back cover out of some medium weight chipboard. I'm making one roughly about this size. Um, it's it's pretty small so that's the size of my hand. Um, and then we're going to cut the, um, take a paper towel roll and we're going to cut the spine. So just find the middle section of the paper towel roll and just cut it in half and then cut your spine so that it is exactly the same length as the cover. And on the spine I've just marked four little lines. Now these are going to be where these raised areas are here as you can see on this one. And all of that is is just a few pieces of string that I've glued there and then um, it's made that the raised bump. Now you don't have to do that. Um, it just gives it a little bit of interest and I really like the look. So um, I've, I've marked four lines and all you do to, to find equal distance is to, um, to measure the length of the roll and then say you want four lines you would divide that, that length by five so you always divide um, one more number than you need to and then that leaves gives you the, um, the distance you need to measure for each section. So to assemble this cover, just take a piece of scrap paper and cut it the same size as your spine. Be, these bits here can be as long as you like. Just uh, give it a fair bit of um, a fair bit of space, so maybe an inch and a half or so. Um, then we're going to use some Mod Podge or whatever your favourite glue is, and just glue that on the inside of the spine. Then I'm going to, to let that dry before I continue, that way it won't slip around on me. Now the, uh, the paper there is pretty dry so I'm just going to glue on the sides now, the front cover and the back cover. Just going to put some glue all over. Then push the cover right up against the spine. Now my side pieces are still a little bit wet so I'm just going to be kind of a bit careful with it um, but I'm going to glue on these pieces of string and I've cut some string that's slightly a little bit longer um, than the spine and I'm just going to put some glue down. Now if you have some really thick string then you only need to do this once. 
um, or you know for whatever look you're going for but I just wanted to use the string I have so I'm going to stick three pieces down I'm going to stick two on the line and then one directly on top of the two pieces of string I'm going to stick the third piece directly on top pieces of string have have dried enough to be able to hold themselves straight just take a, a sharp pair of scissors and um, and just give them a trim back then if they've come apart anywhere see some of these are a little bit um, coming apart just re-glue them and wait for them to dry we want them to be quite strong because we're going to knock them around and push them quite a fair bit my spine is still drying a little bit um, so I'm just going to be careful not to knock it too much but I'm going to glue some pattern paper to the front and the back and I'm going to let it hang over a little bit um, because we're going to wrap that around um, to the underside so it looks nice and neat so I'm going to put some glue all over the cover Then push the pattern paper on. And now I've turned it over and I'm just going to cut a bit of a border around. Now on the, each of the corners, I'm just going to cut across the corner to take out some of that bulk. Um, and I'm just going to um, put my ruler up against that corner. And if you can see, I'm just going to leave a little bit extra um, paper. So when we, when we do fold that, the corner's not exposed. If you cut too close, the, um, the corner will expose a little bit and you'll be able to see the chipboard underneath. Okay, I have my front and back cover with the pieces of um, pattern paper on it and now I'm just going to fold it over and I have a little bit of um, score tape on all around the edges on all three sides. Let's get that one off. And um, that's just because I don't feel like holding it to glue it. Um, score tape will do that pretty well. So I'm just going to fold them over. All three sides. And it doesn't matter here where it's not straight, um, how where I had trouble cutting it earlier. This is all going to be covered anyway, so um, so if it's not quite not quite neat, that's fine. You just need it to look good on the um, on the front. And now we have nice wrapped edges. I have my front and back um, pattern papers covered. And the next thing we're going to cut a piece of material to go over the spine. Now you need it to hang over top and bottom quite a fair bit. So I've got it hanging over maybe a centimetre and a half. And I want it to hang over a little bit extra on the um, either side of the spine as well. Because when we glue the spine down, we're then going to fold this piece under so that it has a nice edge. So, so we're going to start by putting a bit of fabric glue. This and we're going to put a bit on the um, top half of the spine. Now the material that I'm using is pretty cheap and pretty thin. So if you put too much on, you, it actually soaks through the fabric to the front and it um, doesn't look very nice. So I'm going to um, do a pretty thin layer of it so it doesn't soak through.
and place my fabric on the top and press it in. I'm just using my fingernails or if you have a sharp object of some sort like something pointy to press it into that that ridge line and I'm going to work pretty slowly with this um, I want to get it right so I'm going to let that dry now that had glued just to below the ridge line I'm going to let it dry so when I lift that back up and apply more glue it doesn't come off again. I want it to stick first before I continue. So that is glued down and dried so I'm just going to lift it up and I'm going to work in sections so I'm only going to go as far as just below the ridge line of the next lot of string. And then I'm going to let that dry again and I'm just going to continue this all the way down. Now that my spine is dry, I'm just going to lift this up and tuck the cover under so that it's back. And then fold this piece of fabric back. Sometimes helps if you jiggle it around a bit to find a decent angle. But then I'm going to fold this raw edge under and then just run an iron across that so that it's nice and crisp. And I'm just going to repeat that for the front and the back side of the, um, the spine. Press that, I'm just going to put a bit of fabric glue on the underside of that fold. Just to hold it, hold it down. Okay, so as you can see we're going to have a nice folded edge along the front of the cover. Next I'm just going to take some glue and put it on the underside of the folded piece. And you may be wondering why I spread it out with my finger all the time. It gets all over your fingers, but spreading it out thins out those lumps of glue and it doesn't soak through as bad at the front. So I'm just going to fold it down onto the cover and then pull it quite firm. Okay, and when that has dried and you straighten that cover out, it's going to pull even tighter so you end up with a nice edge there. And repeat that with the back. Now we're just going to open it up, uh, put some glue on these overhanging parts and then just fold them all down neatly doesn't have to be too perfect because again that's going to be covered up uh, by the insides of the book. So that's the front and the back finished. Uh, now we're going to start working on the inside. Um, what I have here is another piece of fabric that fits just inside that spine with just a little bit, it's just a tiny bit shorter. Um, and it hangs over quite a bit as well. Um, on the back, because my material is really thin, I just put a little bit of lightweight interfacing on there, um, which is just this stuff from the sewing store, and you just iron it on and it's got a bit of a glue. And it just stiffens the fabric a little bit. You don't have to do it. I just did it because my, my fabric's pretty thin. Um, it's not it's not totally necessary because we're going to be doubling it over anyway. Um, but like we did with that paper piece right at the very beginning, we're just going to put some glue in the spine area here and then press the fabric in right side up. Then we're going to allow that to dry completely before moving on.
while the spine is drying, we're just going to take two little pieces of chipboard. These are about one and a half centimeter wide, and that's going to form this little bar here that the um, that the screws fit into. So we're just going to put a little bit of score tape on one side. And now this is just to hold it. It's temporary, so don't don't go gluing it down or anything like that. Then we're going to fold back this piece of fabric and we're going to stick this little bar down. I'm going to actually shorten my bar a little bit. I made it a bit too long. Um, but we're just going to stick that down right up against the edge of the spine. Next we're going to put some glue on the top of it, only on the top because we want it to be only glued on one side. Then press that fabric nice and smoothly over the top. We're going to repeat that for the other side and then let it dry. Now when that fabric is pretty dry on there, we're going to lift it up and remove that little bit of tape that was holding it in place. And then we're going to glue on the other side. And fold the material over and glue that down. And that makes a nice little ridge. Now I'm just going to make the hole for the album posts um, using a crocodile, and I'm going to use the big the big hole, and I'm just going to mark up on this um, on this tab about an inch. Most importantly I'm just going to find where the center of that little tab is. And then I'm going to because this this uh, crocodile here the particular one I have that is an inch there so I know that it goes it's going in all the way to an inch if I push it to the end so I just really need to make sure that the hole is in the center of that tab and punch it and I'm going to repeat that for for this one here so it's an inch out from the edge and two on the other side as well uh, my four holes are punched, so now I'm going to, I've cut a piece of, uh, of pattern paper to nicely fit on the inside there, and that's up against this um, tab here, and I've inked the edges with vintage photo ink. I'm just going to quickly do the same on the cover itself. And now I'm going to glue this down. So I'm going to um, put some fabric glue under it. And push the, um, the tab so that it's standing straight up. And then flatten the fabric out. Next I'm just going to use a bit of Mod Podge and I'm going to glue the inside cover on.
there we go and that finishes the inside off just nicely so we'll repeat the same for the other side um, glue this down so that the tab is facing straight up and then cover that with another piece of pattern paper downhill stretch now I'm just going to pretty up the front a little bit by putting some ink on it And on the um, on the lighter colour one, I actually put some ink on on the ridges and um, all of the edges there too. Not a lot, just a little bit. But I don't think that's going to make much of a difference on this dark colour. So I'm going to open it up and insert the album post. So one one end screws on on the album post, and the other end is fixed. So I'm going to put the fixed end at the front. And then I have about 26 pages of um, tea dyed paper that I've scrunched up and I've punched holes in all of those and I'm just going to thread those onto the album posts. All the pages are thread on the album posts so now we're just going to put the album post through the back tab and you have to actually quite squish it up quite a fair bit to... Um, to get it through then once you've screwed that screw on this here will um, will stretch out a bit so I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me wrestle with these screws um, because they can take a little while to get started um, but anyway I will come back once I've finished alright so this is great this is the one time the album post actually cooperated with me and um, screwed in really easy so there they are screwed on the back and on the front is just the blank side so you, there's no screw on there and that's everything we're all finished so you can decorate that you can put um, photos and journaling and and things like that in it and it's a cute little book so I actually have I have three of these now which is nice um, I might even make some more